Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. And now you got me. All right, you can turn me down just a little bit, just a little bit. I don't want to hurt nobody's ears because I might yell a little bit today. I don't know. I'm dressed in my Christmas red, my Mr. Rogers sweater. It's a beautiful day. In uh, anyway. I know it's not Mr. Rogers. <laughs> oh, man. I hope you all doing well. Yes. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for the celebration. And Lord, we thank you for what you've done in each and every one of our lives and our families. And Lord, we just pray, God, that your spirit would just move across our nation like never before. Lord, as we... We live with hope and faith, Lord, that uh, the turnaround is happening, Lord, that the next uh, reformation is about to take place and is already working in parts of our nation. Lord, we thank you for a revived people, a church that rises up like never before to be who you've called us to be. Your voice your manifested presence in the earth. So we thank you for that, Lord, in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen? Amen. 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 I, I just want to start here real quick uh, till I get to the bad news, before I get to the bad news. Um, I, I, borrowed this, I borrowed this from uh, Bill Johnson. He calls it signs and headlines. And here they are. Here's a sign. Toilet out of order. Please use the floor below. 
You know, the Bible says laughter does good like medicine. So how about you take some medicine today? Amen? Even if it ain't funny, laugh anyway. Laugh at me. Laugh at something. Here's another one. Automatic washing machines, you know, in the, uh, the laundry mat. Automatic washing machines. Please remove all your clothes when the light goes out. Some of you will get that at dinner time, but anyway. Sign outside of a secondhand shop. We exchange anything, bicycles, washing machines, etc. Why not bring your wife along and get a wonderful bargain? <laughs> Some of you guys are looking like inquisitive. I, just... and notice on a farmer's field it says, the farmer allows walkers to cross the field for free, but the bull charges. Sign on a repair shop window. We can repair anything. Please knock on the door. The bell doesn't work. <laughs> and then a couple of headlines. Hospitals are sued by seven-foot doctors. They're tall. They're... <laughs> and last but not least, typhoon rips through cemetery. Hundreds dead. Bum, 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 you know, something like that. But anyway, I don't normally do that, but I felt to do it today because some of you need to laugh a little bit. You know, you, you need to just look in the mirror and laugh. <laughs> Amen? Just look in the mirror. Just look at your neighbor and laugh. I mean, just laugh because it, it is absolutely a scriptural truth that laughter does good like medicine. There was a fellow uh, that had terminal cancer and the doctors gave him just a short time to live. And, and, and he said, well, what, what can I do? What can I do? And the doctor said, look, you know, there's nothing that we can do. I, I would encourage you just to do this. Find some of the funniest movies and videos, uh, you know, the Three Stooges or whatever. Just, just watch them, okay? And you know what? He watched them, and several weeks went by, and he was cancer-free. Why? Because something happens. It's medicine, Amen. Laughter is like medicine. All right, so take your medicine because we're going somewhere. According to a Gallup poll, I shared some of this with uh, first responders around the, the county uh, uh, last week. And, uh, you know, there's some, there's some stuff happening. I, I'm still a little bit too loud out there, I think. Uh, anyway, this is a Gallup poll. He said the, the next, you know, they talk about the next mental uh, health pandemic and according to their research, it's here now. One third of Americans are showing signs of clinical anxiety or depression. That means one third, one out of every three people are suffering from anxiety or depression. And listen, it, it, this happened, this started happening before COVID. Actually started around 2014 where the numbers just jumped tremendously. And then we had that, and then we have lockdowns, and then we have face masks, and then we have vaccines and mandates and trouble and struggle and, and cities going crazy and war. Well, anyway, just moving right along here. Uh, so as stress and anxiety soar, so does hopelessness. There are so many people that feel hopeless. How can things ever change for the better? Many times it's followed by suicide, something that, that we deal with, uh, you know, particularly with first responders. And then there's something that they call deaths of despair. Things that are caused, or deaths that are caused by drug overdoses, liver failure from chronic alcoholism and so forth that, that can destroy lives and take them to really the end, but it's a slow death, as it were. In 2020, seven out of 10 are struggling or suffering in their lives. Seven out of 10. So besides destroying lives, suffering can destroy our soul, resulting in, again, a hopelessness. We're in a state of uncertainty. There's so many things in, in this world now that are uncertain. And we've got to find that which is certain, amen? That which is unfailing, that which never changes. Because uncertainty just grinds the life out of us. This scripture in, in, in uh, Isaiah chapter 54, I just want to read that if you want to go there, make a note. Isaiah 54 and, 
and verse 14. It says, in righteousness you shall be established. How many know that Jesus came that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ? He says, in righteousness you will be established. Everybody say, you will be established. You will be far from oppression, for you will not fear, and from terror, for it will not come near you. And you see, we, we look at that and maybe read that, particularly in the King James, we read that and, and, and we, we, we look at it this way, that no oppression will come, therefore we will not be in fear. It's the absolute opposite of that. If you are walking in fear, then oppression will come. But if you walk without fear, you walk with the love of God, you walk, you walk, luck, walk, something, you walk with the love of God and the trust in God, guess what? You don't have to fear. How many know there are millions of people around our world that are, that are living in oppression right now? You've probably seen the news. Some places like Australia and Finland and other places where they're locking people up because they're not doing what they told them to do or acting the way they told them to act. It is tyranny. Thank you for that. Amen. But he says, listen... You cannot walk in fear. Because if you walk in fear, you are opening yourself up to oppression. How many of you believe or agree with me that the world needs a miracle? Amen? And we understand, you know, that, that miracle is what we sang about today. The miraculous. Jesus came. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. But here's the second part. Let earth, what? Receive. Receive. Her king, amen? You know, when we look at these statistics and, and the oppression and, and the anxiety and the depression and, and so forth that people are experiencing, guess what? It is so in the church as well. It is so in the church as well. Why? Because we listen to all of this kind of bad news that's out there on a daily basis and we become oppressed and we become fearful. The next variant, the next oh, monochrom or whatever it's called and what's the next one called and the next one called. I'm sure they had, you know, it's sort of like the hurricane season. They got names, you know, listed for the next one that they can name. Now, I'm not making fun of it, and I'm not saying that there's no reality to what these things do. But what I'm saying is that as the people of God, we cannot live in fear. We cannot be oppressed by the fear of what could happen next. But here's the key, really, because when we talk about joy, and I'm going to read, Abby, if you don't mind, the, the, uh, the message that you sent out. She sent a message out called, uh, called The Why is Missing. The Why is Missing. And then she titled it Joy is Back Again. She says, we have a neighbor. I think it was you, wasn't it? Okay. We have a neighbor who has several Christmas decorations in the yard. One of them is made up of three letters, J-O-Y. You've seen them before. Unfortunately, the Y had been blown down for almost a week. Every time we drove by, we would chuckle and say, hi, Joe. Today, the Y was back up. Our youngest pointed and shouted, Joy is back again. <laughs> That's something that we need to shout. Joy is back again. No matter what it looks like, joy is back again. Why? Because joy is in us. She said, I felt like that's something to hold on to. Joy is back again. Yeah, it's been a rough couple of years, but God is good. Everybody say, God is good. God is good. How much? All the time? All the time? Yes. Is he ever bad? No. Does he ever cause terrible things to happen to you? No. Thank you. You must have been listening to the last message. Okay. So, she says, let us hold on to joy with great expectation like the Magi or the Magi or whatever you are. Magi, what is it? Magi. Magi, is that how you say it? <laughs> like they saw the star 2,000 years ago. I guess it's more like 2,200 years ago, but anyway. The Amplified in Matthew 2.10 says, When they saw the star, everybody say, when they saw the star. 
They didn't see Jesus yet. They saw the promise. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. Sort of like two of you did this morning. I mean, three of four, five. Come on, sometimes we can get so used to church that we, it's just, well, you know, we're church. You know, we're supposed to go to church. We're Christians. We go to church. We can totally miss what God wants to do in us and through us. How many know the world needs to know joy today like never before? Joy that will totally disperse the anxiety and the depression that so many people are dealing with, the fears of what's going to happen next, you know. Is the stock market going to crash, you know. Is, you know, you fill in the blanks. She goes on to say this. I love this verse because these men hadn't seen Jesus yet. All they saw was a star that they had heard, that they had studied about. But they believed and expected that it would lead them to the king of kings. Because of that, they were filled with great joy. And today, everybody say today. I'm sorry, I'm making you work a little bit. but Today and every day, we can be filled with that kind of joy and expectation too. Say amen, amen, amen. Come on, give the Lord a hand. Amen. So joy to the world. I mean, how many, how many people are singing that, listening to that, you know, in Walmart? You know, y'all been to Walmart lately, I guess, you know, and they got songs playing, you know, and joy to the world, and oh, come all ye faithful, and, and you know, all that good stuff, you know, or, or BJ's, or, or wherever you go, you know, you just listen while you're shopping, and, and there's so many people that are hearing the music but have no idea the meaning behind it. Amen. C.S. Lewis said this. He said, joy is the serious business of heaven. Oh, I like that. I like that. You know, there's so many people, so many people that think, you know, heaven is a place of judgment. <clears throat> you know, that they're going to go there and, and be judged, you know, whether they're going to get in or not. Because they don't understand what God has done when the king came. Amen? Amen. The serious business of heaven. And if it's the serious business of, uh, of heaven, and Jesus said, pray, you know, that my kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. My will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So if joy, if he's right about this, if joy is the serious business of heaven, it ought to be the serious business of us here on the earth today. Amen. Come on, say amen. amen. How about this, Romans 4.17? Most of you probably have heard it before, read it before, memorized it before, talked about it before, heard about it before, heard messages about it. It says, so the kingdom of God is, everybody say, the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, not do's and don'ts, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Someone say, you believe in ghosts? Yeah, the Holy Ghost. Righteousness, joy, and peace in the Holy Ghost. Guess what? Two of these items have to do with our emotions. I want you to think about that. See, sometimes we spiritualize everything. We just spiritualize it. It's like, you know, something that's spiritual <laughs> and not emotional. Sometimes people think being emotional, there's something wrong with that. Not so. The kingdom of God is Righteousness, joy, and expression of absolute uh, bliss, you might say, and peace. Both of those have a, a tremendous effect on our mental and emotional condition. Can you say amen to that? And it says this is the kingdom. This is the kingdom. Righteousness, joy, and peace. Now, obviously, if you don't have righteousness, you, you're not going to have peace and you ain't going to have much joy. Amen. And that's why it's so important that you understand that you have become the righteousness of God in Christ. That you're no longer a sinner. Come on, say amen. You're no longer a sinner. You know, one of the first bumper stickers I got, you know, when I became a Christian was, you know, went to the Christian bookstore and you look around, you know, and, and, and I saw a bumper sticker. It said, Christians aren't perfect, just forgiven. I thought, yes, I like that. I really like that. Christians aren't perfect, just forgiven. Till I found out the reality of who we really are. 
We are not just forgiven. We are not sinners saved by grace, but still sinners. We have become the very righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. We're not just forgiven. We have been radically changed from the inside out. The life that's on the inside of us is now totally in line with the righteousness of God. Come on, somebody. Amen. Joy, if it's in the kingdom, and the kingdom is in you, then guess what? Joy is always in reach. Joy is always in reach. Oh, you don't understand, Pastor. You know, I tell you, I got this boss. I mean, it's just irritate the bejeebies out of me. You know, I mean, just constantly give me a hard time. Tell me I ain't doing the job right. Then my wife, I go home and then my, you know, just go on and on and on. And it's as if, you know, I have no joy whatsoever. But listen, you got joy on the inside of you. But it's up to you to release the joy that's in you. Amen. Amen. Nehemiah 8.10, you know the story most of you do. Nehemiah, you know, the wall builder and so forth. And uh, he said, uh, don't be grieved. And we ain't got time to read it. But he said, don't be grieved because the joy of the Lord is your strength. Say it with me. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Listen, the measure of your joy is the measure of your strength. Think about your life right now. I had all these first responders the other night. I had them take a little test. I said, how do you see your life from zero to 10? How do you see your life right now from zero to 10? A good life or not so good? And then in five years from now, how do you see your life zero to 10? How do you see your life right now? How do you see it five years from now? If you measured your joy, if, if we had a device to measure your joy right now, where would it be? Zero? One? You know? Oh, I got a raise. Up two. Nobody's bothering me today. Up oh, three. Listen, for us as believers, we ought to have a ten every day. Honestly. Honestly. Smith Wigglesworth, the great healing evangelist, you know, he would wake up in the morning and he would take about 10 minutes, before he did anything else, he would take 10 minutes and dance before the Lord. Why? Because joy was his strength. So he would get up and he would just dance around and worship the Lord. Amen? Because why? The joy of the Lord is your strength. See, how I many you know stuff happens? You remember the bumper sticker? Stuff happens, right? Jesus said stuff happens. He said in this life you're going to have some trouble you're going to have some tribulation. You're going to have some problems. You're going to have some things to deal with in your life. But be of what? Good cheer. Good cheer joyful. Because I've overcome the world. Yes. You know, we, we fear a virus. What's the worst that can happen to you as a believer? You die? In heaven, this serious business is joy. <laughs> so, are you listening? We should be full of joy, no matter what, no matter what's happening, no matter what's going on around us. Why? Because we have it on the inside of us. But we hide it. And let me say this, you cannot express joy without expressing with your emotions. You know, you just can't sit there like a, what do they call it, a church mouse, you know, or something like that. You just sit there, you know, with your hands folded and Everybody's singing and people are lifting their hands and some people are shouting and you're not releasing anything. Oh, it may be intellectually, you know, you have some communication with God. That's good. That's okay. But joy means you've got to release some emotion. Come on, somebody. Listen, if, if you play the lottery, you shouldn't. But if you play the lottery and you won a million dollars... Guess what? You'd be full of joy. 
You would. Why? Because something good has happened to me. Listen, you can take a million, you can take 10 million, you can take a billion or a trillion dollars or whatever you can imagine would be some kind of joyful thing. But I'm telling you, what God has given us, what he's put inside of you is way beyond the joy that any money could ever bring to you. Say amen to that. The biblical definition of joy, let me just say this real quick. Joy is a feeling. Everybody say feeling. Feeling. It's a feeling. It's a feeling. You know, it's just... it's just a feeling. You know what I'm saying? It's just... It has to do with your feelings. It's not just, you know, it's just some, you know, act of faith, you know. I mean, sometimes you've got to start there. But listen, it, it, it has to do with feelings. We ought to have some feelings. Yeah. You know, it, it, it's like, you know, the church. There was a church, you know, that, that somebody died in the church, died in the church. And so they called the paramedics, and, and, and the paramedics came, and, and they took out half the church before they found the dead one. Why? Because so many people look dead. No feeling. See, dead people don't have any feelings. Now, they're in heaven, of course, they're full of joy. But, you know, if they're dead on earth, they ain't got no feelings anymore. You can slap them around, you can call them names, and they ain't going to react to nothing. Why? Well, they ain't got no feelings. But well, you got feelings. The Bible says we are spirit, soul, and body. How many know your soul is made up of your mind, your will, your emotions? And those emotions mean a whole lot more than we have ever really considered. Because if you don't express joy in your emotions, you're missing the boat. You're not releasing what's on the inside of you. Listen, for me, you know, a Catholic boy growing up, you know, we went to church, you know, and you just did, you know, and quiet and don't move around don't make any noise don't do anything that's what they tell you to do you know and that's most religions are like that but when I came to Jesus and listen it was, it was not easy for me to express any kind of emotion because I'm a man M-A-N I'm a man I don't do all that kind of stuff no 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 my wife's like ah Jesus Jesus! Ah! And I'm like, shh. I'll never forget when her sister came to our house. And we were having some kind of birthday party, I forget. But anyway, we had this little house. It was about 1,150 square feet. No basement, no second floor, one bathroom, and four kids. So we added one bedroom on, so we had three bedrooms. But anyway. But she, she, she got her sister, and she took her in the bedroom and, and, and these walls are like paper thin. And her sister gets filled with the Holy Spirit. And I'm, I'm in the living room. And I hear this. I mean, this is going on, man. It's like, oh, I, and I saw, you know, I saw it because people were there. I started talking like, well, I don't know what. what you, you guys want something else to drink? You know, I, I'm trying to cover up the sound that's coming in. Why? Because joy hit her sister. And the flow of the Holy Ghost, the river with living water was flowing out of her. So joy is, is a feeling. And it's okay to have feelings. You know, dealing with police officers in particular and firemen and so forth, but particularly police officers, you know, it's like uh, 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 they've been told, you know, to shut up their feelings. You know, you can't have any feelings. You know, you just got to, you know, if you've been stopped by a police officer, particularly state police, I mean, it's like, Yes, no, yes, you know, I mean, just, you know, stuff, t- you know, that tough and, and straightforward and no feelings. But God gave us feelings. He gave us feelings that, you know, not something we just express, you know, if the Eagles won. Ah, the Eagles won. Oh, I'm so happy about the Eagles won. Yeah, let's have some more wings, you know, which is so exciting. Or a baseball game or something else. And then come to church and go, hmm, hmm. I think some of you become monks or something, you know. Mm. 
So joy is a feeling of good pleasure and happiness that's dependent on who Jesus is. Why is the church, I mean, not the church, but some of the church, and too many in the church, but why is the world in such a mental pandemic? Because the joy comes from Jesus. It's dependent on who Jesus is rather than on who you are or what is happening around you. It is not the circumstances that destroy your joy. All those things come to try to take you down and take you out. But guess what? You don't have to allow it to. Amen? Say amen, somebody. Thank you for those somebodies. Joy comes from who? The Holy Spirit. Righteousness, joy, and peace. Where? Where? In the Holy Ghost. Where? Isn't that a song that says where? Where? Abiding in God's presence and from hope in his word. Amen. Just like those wise men, the magi. They had hope in his word. They had heard, they had read, they had studied. There's going to be a star. And when that star appears, you will know that the King of kings and the Lord of lords has come to earth as a man. And he was going to deliver his people and deliver the nations of the world. And they were filled with great joy. Why? Because they had hope in the word. Isaiah 61, 10 says, My soul shall be joyful in my God. Come on, can you say that? My soul, my emotions, my feelings, my mind can be joyful in my God. The difference between joy and and uh, happiness, see, happiness has to do with circumstances. I know we have in our Constitution, you know, the pursuit of happiness. That means, you know, circumstances work for you and not against you and so on and so forth. But for the Christian, it ain't about circumstances. Because there's always going to be circumstances. Did you hear that? You're always going to have circumstances, things that circle around you or circle back to you, you know, whatever the case might be. But there are circumstances that we will always face in life. But it has nothing to do with you not walking in joy. Walking in joy is a decision that you make. Happiness is, you know, an outward expression, but joy endures hardship and trials. And connects with meaning and purpose. You know, we can pursue happiness, but we have to choose joy. We have to choose joy. And it ain't like it's something that you got to find somewhere. Like I said earlier, you know, I'm looking for a release from heaven so I can be joyful. No, the release comes from you. It's on the inside of you. Jesus is the Lord of your life. And if the Holy Spirit is in you... Guess what? The joy is right there. You just have to release it. You just have to release it. You know, it's just like earlier, you know, sharing some of those funny things. What happens? You hear something, and it affects your emotions, and you laugh. (laughs) I know I sound a little weird right now, but... Why? Because it, it hits something that releases something on the inside of you. Out of your belly, laughter came. Amen? Why? Because you heard something that made you laugh. And when you hear the word, listen, it ought to make you joyful. And you ought to be able to express that joy. Not sit there like a bump on the log. I'm just talking to people online right now. (laughs) You know who you are. Listen to this. Joy is the emotion that makes life worth living in the moment because it resonates with our core identity, who we really are. And the world, like never before, needs to know that somebody can walk in joy no matter what's going on in life. There are so many people that are in such oppression. Just look at them. Walk the streets. Go to the stores. You see them. They're they're oppressed people. 
They are uh, anxious and depressed and, and just having a difficult time. You know, the news says, you know, the, the, the Ten Spies Network says, you know, things are getting worse and worse and worse. And look out and, oh, my God, the, you know, the sky is falling. And let me say it again in case you didn't hear it before. The solution is not, Jesus, get me out of here now. Now, he can take you out, you know what I'm saying, and, you know. But he's not coming to get us yet. I know that messes with some of your theology, but I'm telling you, read the book. Read the book. He's not done yet. He said, upon this rock, he told him, upon this rock I'm going to build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And that's been taught for many years that, you know, we have a barricade. So hell can't get in get a hold of us doesn't mean that at all it means that the gates of hell won't be able to withstand what the church is going to do somebody once said and you probably heard it many times misery loves company you want to spoil your joy just find somebody that's miserable hang out with them for a while you know, and you, can, you ever talk to somebody, you know, I mean, they're just miserable, you know, and you say, yeah, but, you know, this is you know, good, you know, yeah, but, you know, it's really like this. And this and yeah, I know that's good, but listen, I'm just miserable people. Misery loves company. I mean, and demons just love to come to those parties, you know. But guess what? So does joy. And guess what? Joy throws much better parties. Joy throws much better parties than misery ever will. So if you're going to have a party, have a joy party. Amen? Come on. Yeah, yeah, my wife, she used to sell uh, Tupperware. Remember Tupperware? Right? Did you sell Tupperware? No. It, was the, it was the other one. Avon, right? She, we, bought, we bought Tupperware. Mary Kay. She sold Mary Kay. Mary Kay. You know, and then there's these other parties that y'all have, you know, this thing and that thing and whatever else, you know. And hey, parties, have fun at the party, you know, m- spending money. I know we, have, we had lots of Tupperware back then, I know. <laughs> they have parties, have parties for, the, for all kinds of stuff, you know. Party yesterday, you know, kids party yesterday. And, 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 and we had a party last Sunday, you know, it was awesome. I mean, it's just awesome. See, the kids up here, you know, guess what? Because they don't mind letting their feelings show. Have you noticed that? They don't mind letting their feelings show. They're up here, you know, just dancing around. They don't care who's looking. Or who, you know, who cares? They don't care how good they sing. You know, I mean, they, you know, they're taught to try to sing good, but they don't care. Oh, yeah, man, that, that boy, that boy was just dancing up a storm. Why? Because they haven't become mature adults that can't really show any kind of expression of feelings. You stuffy old... <clears throat> this one. And listen, listen, Isaiah 54, I, oh my gosh, okay, I just, can you give me five more minutes? Just five. God's... You know that one. <laughs> anyway, Isaiah 54, let me just read it real quick uh, out of the, uh, the, uh, the uh, King James. Uh, it, it says this. Sing, O barren, you who have not born. Now, this, this is a weird, weird thing to say. Sing, O barren, you who have not born. Break forth into singing and cry aloud, you who have not labored with child. For more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married woman, says the Lord. Enlarge the place of your tent and let them stretch out the curtains of your dwellings. Don't spare. Lengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes. For you shall expand to the right and to the left and your descendants will inherit the nations and make the desolate cities inhabited. Wow. Who's he saying that to? The barren woman that has no children, and yet, if she does what he is telling her to do, cry out, sing aloud. You know, literally, the word means to scream, to scream aloud. (laughs) 
I'm having children. He says, listen, if you, if you, you, you really want to see this happen, then begin to be joyful. Begin to spread the tent pegs. Begin to make room for the child. There was a healing evangelist that uh, Jack Coe, actually, I don't know if some of you remember the history back in the 50s. Great healing evangelist, saw miracles like crazy. Anyway, there was these five people that were in wheelchairs and they were going to come uh, to be prayed for. And, and so they brought them, five of them in wheelchairs, and, 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 and all of them had socks on but no shoes. And he said, y'all go home and get shoes and come back. You get it? They all came back with shoes. And all of them got up and walked. Why? Because they did something in expectation of what God was going to do. So he said, shout aloud, sing for joy, because you that are barren are going to have more children than the married woman. So the promise, you know, when we begin to shout aloud, no matter, no matter what it looks like, but what we believe God is going to do in our lives or in this nation, and we begin to shout about it before we ever see it, like the Magi, they were so excited and full of joy. Why? Because they saw the sign that said, it's going to happen, and we're going to see it. Isaiah 54 says, you will spread abroad to the right, to the left, and your descendants will possess the nations and will resettle the desolate cities. See, so God wants to give an inheritance to those who can express their faith through their emotions and through the evidence of their joy. He said, shout aloud. I feel funny doing that. And that's the problem, you know, because sometimes the people around us don't want to be noisy either. So we feel intimidated because they're not making any noise, so we don't make any noise. Passion translation. My last scripture, Sandy Feet. Last scripture, last scripture. Philippians 4 4 in the Passion translation says, Be cheerful. Look at somebody and say, be cheerful, you old dig. Mm. Be cheerful. This is God talking to us. Be cheerful. With joyous celebration. Let me say that again. I don't know if you heard it. Be cheerful. With joyous celebration. In every season of life. That's what makes the difference. In a life that's a blessed life. It's not because we've been through stuff. But it's how we went through stuff. And how we've been after stuff. If it takes your expression of joy away, then you're still in a negative place. And God wants us, like never before, you know, as I was talking to these first responders the other night, and I was saying, listen, and I talked about, of course, you know, faith in God and, 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 and so forth, but I said this, I said, you know what? I don't keep myself in a place of, you know, being positive and, and, and happy and joyful and so forth. I, I don't do it just for me. I do it for those that are watching me. I do it for my family. I do it for my, my kids. And I, I do it for my church. And I do it for my grandkids and my great-grandkids. And anybody else that would hear me or see me, I do it because I want the expression of Christ in me, the hope of glory, to be manifested to the rest of the world that I touch. Be cheerful and joy and with joyous celebration in every season of life. Let joy overflow. Let joy overflow.
And this is, you, you may have to start out, you know, it, it's like priming a pump. You may have to start out with some expressions of joy that you're not quite feeling yet. Says so let joy overflow because you are united with the anointed one. What more could you ask for? What more could you want? You're united with him. And he said, for the joy that is set before me. He's, he's, he's facing the cross. And he says, for the joy that is set before me, he endured. It's time to express some joy. Say amen. Amen. What do you got, Jerry?